Hello everyone and welcome back to part 27 of our MotoGP 24 Let's Play. Yes, we're back this weekend for round 3 of the Moto2 season. This time we're here at the Circuit of the Americas. Of course, if you missed out on the video, uh, that went live from a very soggy os uh, Estoril, sorry, or Portimao even, at uh, the end of last week. I would highly recommend going back and checking out. And I just want to say to everyone still a massive thank you as well so far for the support on this series obviously we've been learning the moto 2 bikes i feel like we are slowly but surely getting there uh, and yeah obviously portimao last weekend we had a really really good race out we're currently up to p4 in the moto Two standings there uh, after a really good run you can see vietti still leads the way ahead of aldegaia there with lopez myself and sergio garcia making up your top five spots in moto 3 uh it is batelli still leading the way ahead of our old teammate daniel holgado uh, so i'll be trying to keep up and see how he gets on over the course of the season as well and then if we take a look at the big class then uh aspargaro is top of the board still ahead of brad binder uh, with francesco bagnia as well in p3 but yes yeah, we return to kota though this weekend i'm hoping it's going to remain just, uh, dry ideally we'll wait and see uh, as to whether that happens we're mighty close to 3,000 subscribers as well on the channel so if you are enjoying moto gp24 Drop us a sub, and yeah, let's get on with it. Good morning from Austin. Good morning again from the circuit. Just a few more minutes, and the second practice session will begin. We're pretty sure the pace will pick up, and we'll start to understand who will be able to book a place in Q2. Well, we've been very lucky so far this season. Obviously, we get to race at circuits we know from Formula 1, as well as MotoGP. Obviously, yeah, it's normally... Oh, hello. Immediately, we've got a little bit of bumping and bashing going on up the top of the hill. Hopefully, I won't get along that penalty for that. But, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of get a few Formula 1 circuits at the start of the year. And then it seems like after that, we end up heading here, there, and everywhere uh, throughout the second half of the season. So, got to try and score the big points where we can, you know. But, to be fair, probably my strongest track in the entire game so far uh, was all the way back in Indonesia. And that certainly isn't uh, on the F1 calendar anytime soon, especially not that track. I think it would probably lead to the most boring F1 race in the world, but oh, that's also not the line there. First lap immediately is going to be invalidated. Uh, obviously, again, I mentioned it in Estoril. I'm trying to lean more on the engine brake as well now. So in these bigger braking zones to allow you to slow the bike down with a bit more aggression. That seems to be really worthwhile. Uh, and it is meant to be dry throughout the entirety of this weekend, so... I'm hoping, therefore, we can kind of really try and fine-tune that art. As you can see, I mean, this bike's trying to take off going down the back straight. It's barely any bumps down here, but it's still trying to wheelie. Well, hindsight is a beautiful thing as well, and I must admit, I'm very happy uh, that we have opted to take a season in Moto, or at least one season uh, in Moto2 before we try and make the switch all the way to MotoGP. Uh, honestly, yeah, obviously, I've ridden those MotoGP bikes a couple of times on this game. And yeah, the Moto2 bikes certainly feel like a decent step in the middle. It's quite weird how immediately tame the Moto3 bikes felt. Now, obviously, we've moved up into the middle tier. Uh, so, yeah, this this does give us some decent preparation for next season. I haven't, you know, we'll, we'll kind of wait and see how well we get on. Uh, but, you know, it might be that we try and move up pretty quickly. It might be that we take another year just to keep learning. But I am really enjoying MotoGP24 still. This game is so much fun uh, and something a bit different to the F1 game as well, which is nice. I'm certainly learning as well about how much more the bumps upset the bike than it ever did on Moto3 as well. I mean, this thing, yeah, really is a bit of a handful to try and get a full lap hooked up. That feels like you've really maximised it. Coach, yeah, it's definitely a bit more of a ragged track on a bike. As we're going to do a 2.12.7 first lap. Behind front of me runs a 2.11.9. I think we can get there, but yeah, as always, I've got no real idea of what the pace of the top runners is going to be like. And they tend to improve much later on in the session. In some of the big braking zones as well, you realise, you know, now you're carrying, it can be over 100 kilometres an hour more uh, into some of the corners, just how important nailing your braking point is. As the bike always wants to try and short it from the sick gear uh, down this back straight over that bump. But yeah, it's into this corner, obviously, at the end of sector... Well, not really sector two, is it, on a motorbike? See MotoGP with their different sectors. I mean, we broke early there, and you still barely get it stopped for the corner. See Vietti as well now. It's running all 211.6. So yeah, times are continuing to improve. 
again, it gives you an appreciation for just how stupidly fast a Formula 1 car is around any of these venues. Because, of course, yeah, we're running, what, 35 seconds a lap faster? I know this isn't the top flight still. But I don't think MotoGP, MotoGP bikes are going to be, you know, 30 seconds quicker than these Moto2 bikes there. As a 2.11.4, we go to the top of the board ahead of our teammate Aldegaia. Or whatever this lap time ends up being, I'm just going to head back to the pit lane afterwards uh, and just simulate forward a little bit, see if the AI are able to improve. So a little bit deep through that final corner. Get the power down up towards the line. Six tenths up, we do a 10.7. We've got a nine tenth advantage over Aldegaia. For now. Go free practice done and dusted then and we do end up fastest there. We were the only rider who opted for soft both front and rear. So that might explain why we had a little bit more pace over the likes of Alonso Lopez and our teammate Alder guy there. But yeah, I don't want to speak too soon. But I feel like we're getting up to pace uh, on this bike at the moment then. As you can see uh, who your top 14 and make it through that. Aaron Kanet by less than a tenth of a second over Onku. Um, but yeah, down at the rear of the field it is Eskrieg once more. But, yeah, let's see what we can do then as we head straight to Q2. Maybe pole position is on the cards, but probably not. Good morning and welcome back to the track for the second Moto2 class qualifying session. Soon we'll see the 18 qualified riders take to the track and finally find out who will start in pole position in tomorrow's race. Well, the goal for us first and foremost is just get back out there and try and match the time we set in free practice. Looking a lot more sunny here at Kota on Saturday afternoon. Uh, I am tempted as well. I, I'm probably going to bump it up to 50% races, I think. I mentioned it a couple of episodes ago. We're doing 35% currently. So, at a track like Kota, it's only going to be like another two or three laps. Uh, so, it'll add like an extra 5-10 minutes to the race length. So, hopefully it'll just, you know, maybe provide you guys with a little bit more immersion as well. Uh, and yeah, I think obviously on most... Uh, I've gone down one too many gears there. That'll put a number on the engine. Um, but yeah, I think it would just kind of make things a little bit more exciting and a little bit more realistic. Well, as first laps go, this one has not been fantastic so far. We do find the apex, though, down at the end of the back straight. I mean, it's still none of the corners around here as bad as Turn 1 at Estoril uh, for just feeling completely impossible. I'm not looking forward to trying to do that on a MotoGP bike if we ever get there. Uh, just because I think we have to break even earlier in towards that first corner. I did see some of the news from Austria over the weekend. Uh, I saw that Mar Marquez fell off again. Uh, and apparently KTM, their bike looks even more ridiculous than it ever has done before. The aero wars in MotoGP are a real thing. Um, but I don't seem to be doing any kind of development with this Moto2 bike. Although apparently it does exist. Through the final couple of corners though to finish off our first lap. Hopefully the time is going to be a good one. 2.11.9. Not great, to be honest. What is that? Literally two corners in a row. I've been absolutely ran into the back of by Vietti. Like, you can't... Surely he gets a penalty for that or something. Or not, apparently. The, the MotoGP just go, Yeah, that's alright. You, you were in his way. As now I'll get my lap and validate for track limits anyway. Well, as I've said before, you can kind of hustle the Moto3 bikes around the circuits a little bit. You know, you can really kind of throw them into corners and try and really drag them in. Uh, these these things you've got to be a lot more gentle with. you kind of got to let the bike find its own grip, find its own kind of space, if you will, uh, to really extract the most time out of it. You feel like you've got to be a lot more one with the machine uh, in Moto2 than Moto3. Uh, same probably can't be said for the gearboxes, though. you know, absolutely got to try and use and abuse those if you want to keep up with the AI into the corners. But yeah, this final sector is where I lost a bit of time last time round. So you can just see the guy in front just nick the curbing there, and you can see how much it upsets the rhythm. So can we try and find an apex this time round through this horrible double left-hander? Yes, we can. And a second up, this will be good enough for pole position at the moment. I'll run slightly wide there. Luckily, no lap invalidations or anything like that. Because uh, I don't think we gained anything from it. But two more corners to go then. Just gently squeezing on the throttle there. As we open ourselves up for the penultimate corner of the lap. Get right up to that curbing. And around the outside. There's one more corner to go then. Are we about to get dive-bombed again? We'll switch him. We'll read him like a book. Eight tenths up though. Where is this going to put us on the board? We go P5. Eight thousandths away. 
from P4. Well, less than four minutes on the clock then, so this is really going to be our last ditch run here towards the end of qualifying. We're only a tenth and a half away from pole. I mean, even P5 would be a new best qualifying result for us so far uh, in Moto2. But if we could just find a little bit more, if we could just go a little bit quicker here, that would be fantastic. I'd love to try and claim our first pole in just our third ever race. That would certainly send a message uh, to the big teams up in the higher division. So we try and thread our way through the S's. It's so difficult. One lap you'll find it, the next you won't. But this time around we seem to. Six tenths up. As we make our way then down the back straight, I'm really trying to make an effort to avoid all of the bumps to try and just see if we can claw any extra little bit of time. And it looks like we will that time around. Still just under two tenths up though. By the time we slow it down in towards what is normally the final sector of the lap. Running a little bit wide through there, kicking the back end out as we try to get it down a gear. Just throw it into first gear there and hope that the bike grips up at the back. And now as we make our way in through the S's, oh, it's so tricky, so tricky not to let the bike run wide underneath you. But the time is looking good. We are finding more and more here as we make our way through the Turkey S section. Just a couple more corners left of the lap. These feel horrible on an F1 car. Never mind trying to pinpoint them. On a motorbike as well as... Oh, come on. We just ran a little bit wide over the entry curb. It's going to compromise our run right the way through. One more corner to go, though. And again, we cannot get the bike rotated in. Ah, the final corner. Foot to the floor. What's the time going to be? We still have enough. It is going to be a 110.8. I still think what we set in practice was quicker. But that, for now, is good enough for P1. Well, there we go, then. It is P1 here at the Red Bull Grand Prix of the Americas. Here at Cota. Alonso Lopez lines up P2 ahead of Ayagura there with Aldegar in P4 and Chantra in fifth place. But yeah, we are in the best seat in the house, ready for the race. Can we try and convert this one to victory? Hello to all our friends back home from the USA. We're live from Austin, one of the tracks with the highest elevation change in the entire championship. In a few moments, we'll move to the main straight to watch the start of the Moto2 race. The cameras are accompanying us to the starting grid, where engineers and mechanics are checking final details before the start. The sun is shining, but the temperatures are low today. Many riders have braved a soft rear tyre, but given the layout of the track, they've opted for a hard front. Well, looks like we have got a couple of penalties coming in. And yeah, Vietti, he did get a penalty there at the end of qualifying, so happy to see... Uh, that we saw that for him. We are going to opt, though, I think, for front tyres... Uh, sorry, for medium tyres, even, on both front and rear. Not sure how we could have front tyres uh, on both front and rear there as well. But pole position today. We've got to try and be ahead of Aldegar in the standings by the end of this one. The team would also like to see us get a podium. Let's do this thing. The race officials give the OK. Riders have their eyes fixed firmly on the light. Just a few more seconds, and the Grand Prix of the Americas is go. Well, first and foremost, I want to try and not fall over on lap one. So we've got the ten red lights on. It is going to be lights out. And away we go then here. And you can see immediately Alonso Lopez will get a good start. I'm going to try and get to the, get to the inside for turn one. Not in an aggressive, I want to try and get past everybody manner. But in a, I hope I don't get collected kind of way there. And that's exactly worked for me through the first turn. We've lost a couple of spots there to Agura uh, and Lopez in front. But yeah, not too worried about that one. As we navigate our way into the S's for the first time there. Like I said, you've got to be so careful when everybody's around you there. I like, don't know who that was. Trying to look around the outside, but not able to hook it up. As you can see, yeah, it seems like Moto2 still can be a little bit more wide open in terms of who delivers on any given weekend. So that might be a track limits warning. Nope, we just like, stopped from going over the curbs. Obviously so used to avoiding them all in qualifying. But I believe we would need to win today if Aldegar finished where he is for the points to be all tied up. So we need to try and get a big uh, result in. Or hope that he drops down the order slightly. Not that I want that for my teammate early on in the season. As we get absolutely mugged off by another couple of riders, including Aldegar himself. The gap was 14... Uh, sorry, I think it was 13 points or 12 points coming into this, wasn't it? So let's see if we can try and get a run on him back down this back straight. He's... Oh, breaks early. We we'll have to try and get it slowed down on the inside. Nice straight line braking for as long as we can. But we will get it stopped as more contact with our teammate again. We'll back up into the podium places. How would, surely that's going to be no penalty for either of us. 
There's barely a little bit of contact. Surely it's just a warning, if anything. Or nothing at all there, as that one might be something. So you just bump into the back of the guy in front. I cannot let Alonso and older guy run away. Oh, it was actually older guy that got a warning for the incident, not me for a change. Well, I'm still very, very worried about just getting dive-bombed by those couple of riders behind. Apparently, even if older guy's not going to give me any extra room, why would I expect anybody else up and down the grid? Maybe, you know, taking that pole position yesterday, we put a bit of a, you know, mark on our back uh, for everybody else that, you know, we are going to be a rival, we are going to be a threat this season to potentially show up a few riders that thought they might get a MotoGP seat safe uh, nice and early on. You can see a Lopez and a Gura still battling for that lead in front. We just got to try and catch up. Well, the other one I'm expecting to see a lot of here is going to be track limits violations. Estoril. Uh, sorry, Port. I keep calling it Estoril. It's Portimao. I'm so used to the Portuguese Grand Prix. Still, I've never seen it in Estoril, but it always used to be there. Um, but anyway, tangent over. My point was, obviously, we didn't see that many track limits violations uh, in Qatar or Portugal last time out. There's a 2 11 2 coming in uh, by a Lopez. So, yeah, we only did a 2 11 4, so we didn't lose much. But the problem is there is that we did lose time. But it seems like there's a bit less luck as well. If you guys remember back in Moto 3, it felt like, you know, the top riders would be like a second a lap quicker than you, and then the other riders would be a second a lap slower. That doesn't quite seem to be the case in Moto 2, or at least in these early rounds. Uh, but yeah, Aragura and Alonso Lopez, they're still having a mad battle for the lead. I just want to get to it. That's the problem we've got. But at the moment, we're all pretty evenly paced around this circuit. There's little bits where I gain or lose. But yeah, we're just not taking the time out of them over the course of a lap. So there we go. That time around, we do take new fastest lap of the day. Still not quite able to crack into the two tens like we did in both qualifying and free practice. We are still the only riders to do it all weekend. There is a huge kick from the bike at turn one. It did not like that. But that final corner as well seems to be absolutely lethal. Um, you know, I can either brake early enough and rotate the bike in too early and get a penalty. Or I just can't seem to get it rotated through. And it's definitely making the difference each and every lap. I mean, I've got to avoid that bump on the outside there. It's still nothing to separate Agura and Lopez. And still, next to no time have I taken out of them. It's so frustrating. We are pushing hard towards the end. I know if I get it nailed, I can get near, though. I know I can take a good second out of them. But it is just trying to get it hooked up through this first sector that can be so notoriously difficult. I know it's only round three of the season, but I really just want to see these two start beefing with each other a little bit more. You know, I'm not saying they need to fall off or anything like that, but... You know, and they're definitely both trying to go for it, but they don't seem to be really trying to throw each other off or put a dive bomb in. Lopez seems to lose a little bit more there in the braking zone. And then I go and lose it all on corner exit. Oh, there you go. Lopez and Agura that time round trying to throw each other off down at turn one. That's what we need to see a little bit more of on this last lap. And now you can just see we try and take a little bit more time out of the pair of them there. The gap to Lopez now. Down under a second as apparently really you know, destroying the gearbox through turn uh, three and four. That actually seems to be the way to go about things here. Are we finally, we've rated all race for a window here to try and get to Lopez and Agura. Are we finally going to see that open up for us on the final lap there? We've been patient. It's actually been a fairly quiet race for us, to be completely honest, up to this point. But now we have closed up to the back of our championship leader there. And, oh, just see, we had a little bit of a moment. We'll get our final track limits warning, I believe, of the race. Very much, we've got five of them. We'll use all five of them. So oh, a little snap of oversteer again off the corner. That might give Alonso Lopez just a little bit of breathing room here as the slipstream is very, very uh, more, you know, more potent than it was on a Moto3 bike uh, in this game. And we try and just open up a run to the outside. He breaks it a little bit earlier than ourselves. This has all happened right at the end of the race there as we'll try and hook it up not able to that time open up the next corner though deep on the brakes around the outside still not able to do it though but this is what this final sector here at coach is great for is just being able to try the different line see if you can find the grip and see if you can capitalize there as we round off of the corner once more i mean this could be a 210 last lap as well so i think it's not only the lopez and agura tripped over each other I think it's that we've become a little bit quicker as well there. So we'll try and send it on the throttle. Might be able to get to the inside for the ultimate corner. We can't quite find it, though. 
We're going to run very, very wide on the exit of the corner. We've given it our all on the final lap of this race. And that's what I mean about the understeer as well through the final corner. We tried our best. Agura is going to win. For us, it is another podium in P3. While we wait for the director to take us to the Park Ferme to meet today's stars, let's take a quick look at the final results of this Moto2 race. Well, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit gutted with that one, but look at the fastest laps between your top three there. One one hundredth of a, one one thousandth of a second in it between your top three. And again, that goes to show just how similar the pace was between Agura, Lopez and myself. Uh, Aldegar, our teammate, comes through for P4 ahead of Chantra, who did get into the two-minute tens at the end. Uh, Guevara, Jake Dixon, Kanet, Gonzalez and Roberts there rounding out the top ten uh, with Celestia Vietti down in P13, and Salak, admittedly, I think I saw him get a penalty. Not sure how genuine that 209 was uh, at the end of the race there. Garcia, the only one not to be classified in the end, so disappointing day out for them there. As you can see in the championship standings, Alonso Lopez now at the top of the table, ahead of Aldegaia and Vietti. We are just 12 points back, though, ahead of Agura after his first win of the year as well. So I think consistency is going to be key over the course of this season thank you all so much for watching if you have enjoyed please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed and yeah we'll be back very soon when moto gp returns ready for round four of the year